In this um, lecture, we will be looking at database systems and database management systems. We'll be looking at some of the properties of databases and also talking about cloud and BI or business intelligence systems. In terms of the resources to read, I've provided the links here for you from chapter two and these two links here. And I'm going to quickly open it here. So we have this chapter two that talks about the fundamental concepts and properties and also about database management systems. Um, I have this link that talks about relational database management systems. Um, strongly recommend to go over this because it covers some of the important terminologies and also gives some good examples about relational database management systems. Um, I also have a link here that quickly talks about cloud databases. Specifically, we want to look at the benefits of having a cloud-based database. So database systems are made out of database management system, which is your DBMS. As you can see here, it is shown here um, with these dotted um, in the dotted square here. This is the entire system that controls and manages your database. It includes the actual data, which is stored in the database. So if you look here, you have the server-like looking area here, which is called the database. And this is where your actual data is stored. The DBMS is like the controller or the manager of your database. So it decides which applications can gain access to the database how users can access the database, security, storage management, all of this is the responsibility of the database management system. So you can think of the DBMS like your operating system on your computer that controls and manages everything. The same is the case of a database management system. So when you're thinking about a database system, it consists of your DBMS, and then you also have application programs that need to gain access to your database to retrieve data out. You also have end users here that are trying to gain access to your database management or database and it's controlled through the database management system. So keep in mind that it, this is the entire database system. It includes the DBMS um, applications that are trying to access users and these are all part of what forms your database system. But you also want to uniquely understand the role that a DBMS plays in terms of managing access and controlling aspects of the database. So these are some properties of the database. Um, it's a representation of some aspect of the real world or collection of data elements. So examples could include we want to keep track of employees in the organization. So we have employees. We want to keep track of all the products in an organization. So product would be a specific fact or a theme that we want to keep track of. Databases are logical and they're coherent and consistent. Um, they're designed and populated with data because that's the main aspect that you're keeping track of. You're keeping at keeping track of data and this data is stored as a field or we call it also as an attribute. So a combination of these fields are what make up a table. For example, each field in an employee table contains data about an individual employee. So if you're looking at a product table, each field would contain data about a particular product that we're keeping track of. So these are some relational database terminologies. Data is the actual value stored in a database. So when you look at this example here, role number one, Alex, and the phone here would be an example of data that you're storing in this particular table here. And then you have information, which is data that's processed to have meaning. So data and information are a little different because information is when you take data, process it in some way to give it meaning. For example, you're looking at customer data and you find the total number of products that a customer has purchased, that would become taking data and giving it meaning and saying that's information. If you're looking at employee sales and you are looking at employee sales over a week and you're calculating the weekly sales made by a particular employee, you're looking at information because you're taking data and processing it to give it meaning. 
database, again, in terms of relational databases, is a collection of tables. Tables is a collection of records. So if you look at this particular table here, it's a collection of these records that you're seeing here, examples of a record, which is also known as a tuple or a row. In this particular case, you have your row number one. If you're looking at this first row here for row number one, Alex, and the phone number, this would be the first record that you're looking at. And a collection of these records is what makes your table. Record, again, is the horizontal row. So this is one record. This is the second record. This is the third record, and this is the fourth record of this table. So you can say that this particular table has four records in it. And then a field is the vertical columns of the table. So if you look at this particular example here, we have three columns here, roll number, name, and phone. And these are also known as columns or attributes. So these are some important terminologies that you want to make sure you're understanding in the context of relational databases. So the database management system, which is also DBMS, it's a collection of programs that enables users to create and maintain the database. It controls access to all the database resources. It provides an environment that's convenient and efficient for users to retrieve and store information. So again, the DBMS is the manager. It's the controller. It makes sure that everything about the database environment is running smoothly. Users are able to ask questions to the database. The database is able to retrieve the data. Um, the database management system is able to retrieve this data and give it to the users or the application programs that are controlling it. So again, you can think of the database as the controller or the management of your manager of the database environment. So again, this is an example of a bank database management system here. Um, and as you can see here, database management system sits between the users and application programs and the actual data that's stored within that database. So before users can access any of this data, they have to go through the database management system, which would control which users are getting it. It controls the performance. It makes sure that things are running smoothly here. So different departments can gain access to different levels of data. So people in the personal department would, might want to need to access a certain set of the data, whereas the loan department and the accounting department might want a different set of this data. So again, keep in mind that the DBMS sits between these different entities to control and manage the flow of data. So commercially, there are a number of different database management systems from Oracle, MySQL, Microsoft SQL, um, PostgreSQL. Um, so these are commercial database management systems. They are powerful and they're used to manage very large scale database systems. In this course, we will be using MySQL to try to learn how to set up a database management system and different aspects of it. So in the web link that I've provided you to read about, it talks about the different popular relational database management systems from MySQL, PostgreSQL, Oracle DB, SQL Server. I strongly recommend that you go over this reading because it gives you a comprehensive view of the different types of relational database management systems that are available. So SQL stands for Structured Query Languages. Remember that databases are storing data and the main purpose of this storage is so that users and other application programs can access and retrieve this data. So SQL is considered to be a fourth generation programming language and that is the language that we use to retrieve this data out of databases. So it lets users and programs access, manipulate and update databases. So again, keep in mind, this is considered a fourth generation programming language. So I have this figure here that shows you how these different programming languages have evolved. So we have machine language, assembly language, third generation programming languages like C++, Java, and then we have a fourth generation, which means it's more procedural in nature. It's not considered a full-blown um, third type generation programming language. It's considered more 
a fourth generation, which is more procedural in nature. So you're writing more statements to retrieve this data out of the database. So front end applications are other another important area within database systems. These are applications that interact with databases to present information to users. Um, it sits between the user and the database management system because rather than having users directly access or connect to the database management system, we have a number of different web-based front-end applications that can interact with the database. So these are mostly web-based solutions such as portals and these front-end applications also use SQL to a certain extent in order to retrieve data out of databases. So I'm sure most of you are familiar with cloud technologies because that's where we are seeing the future trend with how people are managing and organizations are using technology. So with cloud technology, um, every aspect of what you're trying to access in terms of your technology infrastructure is not within your premises, or, but we are using the internet in order to connect to these resources. So database technologies also operate within the cloud environment and they are hosted within a cloud environment. Examples include Amazon's Redshift, Amazon Relational Database Services, Amazon's Aurora, Google Cloud, Microsoft Azure. So these are examples. So I've provided you a link here um, so that you can read a little bit more about deployment of cloud-based databases. Of course, they have advantages in terms of lowering cost reducing risks because um, you you know you have your data and your services on the cloud and you can actually it provides you with um, availability features and service to eliminate the loss of revenue due to downtime because you're not really hosting a lot of your services on site but you're having this being managed by cloud service providers on the other side you could also say that it could present some level of security risks Again, but there are pros and cons to both approaches. It's a faster, it improves your agility and innovation, and it's a huge cost saving pretty much for organizations in terms of saving management costs and um, cost to host services. So there are a number of different benefits when it comes to cloud database services. So this is an increasingly used trend of deployment that we are seeing uh, within database environments. Um, finally, data warehouse and BI systems, it's also important to have just a basic understanding. Of course, data warehouse and BI systems would be an entirely different course to learn about. But of course, you need to have a foundational knowledge in relational databases because they are very related together. Um, so while databases keep track of the most updated information and they support current transactions within an organization, data warehouses, they keep track of historical data. So if you're, for example, keeping track of um, um, customers in a database and you're keeping track of the customer's address and phone numbers in a typical database, a transactional database, when a customer's address and phone number changes, we update it in the database. But from a business perspective, we don't want to lose historical data. Where did this customer live before? You know, so that we can understand buying pattern changes and different aspects about that customer. So what we do is we take historical data and dump them into data warehouses and then we can management can go into this data and analyze and do a number of different pattern and behavioral um, studies in terms of understanding customer buyer pattern, product patterns, things like that. So data warehouses work very close in conjunction with databases, but they are not the same concepts because data from data, uh, data out of the database is dumped into data warehouses so that they can be later analyzed. Of course, you cannot do this kind of full-blown analysis with data in a database because that would make your database very slow and it can affect performance. Um, so just keep in mind that data warehouses help with these sophisticated data an analysis, forecasting, and planning, and the data from the database are fed to data warehouses. So to give you a better understanding, I've given you a link to a um, YouTube video, which I strongly recommend that you listen to because it talks about the difference between databases and BI systems.